my creations overview throughout the years. This is the free my mind. I, I found that I've been living in the past and I'm hoping that making this video provides some closure and helps me move on. So this is really just therapy for me. If anybody watches this video, well, that's on you. Underground Dwellers, Lyrical Fusion, Superfly, Melanesance. My, my rap music career and rock career. Start off with Too Baggy, me and my cousin, Who Got the Flavor, 1992. Yeah, there were some real classics on there. <laughs> I'm not going to even read these titles. But uh, it actually, there was a couple other songs. I just can't remember the titles for them. I think one was called, uh, now that's what I'm saying. I used to <laughs> ride my bike to pick them up from middle school, ride them home on the handlebars, and we'd record. Underground Dwellers, The Vanton, 1993. There's nothing really much to celebrate on this album other than this was our first album, and it was to have this many songs on an album for young teenagers to be able to figure this all out on our own. We didn't have anybody explaining how to do any of this, that we could make these songs, put them together, and figure out that we could make an album, and it was about 60 minutes long. That in itself was impressive. Everything else about it, not so much. It's a pretty bad album by today's standards, but at the time, nobody had done it. Underground Dwellers, Quadzilla, 1994. Our first three albums, The Vanton, Quadzilla, and Lyrical Fusion, they all kind of blend together. They were all made around that same time, same mindset, same equipment. And, you know, we actually thought we finally had a hit on our hands with another fat track. I think we even made two versions of it. Yeah, there's a remix. Uh, but the rest of the album, I mean, it's cute, just like the first album, but, eh. I run around a town with the Philly in my mouth. Seconds down, we don't make a sound, cause I got the fat chick one in the trunk. With the underground dweller crew to back me up. Underground dweller, another fat track. Underground dwellers. Lyrical fusion, aka F a job, aka Faces of Death, 1995. Lyrical fusion winded up becoming our new name of our group. Originally, the album was called Faces of Death, but then Bone Enterprise, aka Bone Thugs and Harmony, released their album right before we did. So then we changed it to F a job, but we realized, nah. So we called it Lyrical Fusion. I control you, I control your mind, your body, like a puppet to fuck it as I hit the sense of sending out faces of death, faces of death. Right. You know, I, I think we're all fairly proud of this album. Th this album we played a lot. I remember days of summer vacation being in the pool playing this album and then flipping the tape and just playing it front to back. We enjoyed the entire album front to back. Uh, it does not stand the test of time. It's pretty bad by today's standards, but you got to keep in mind at the time, there was no competition. There was no one else doing what we were doing at our age. I don't know, we we're like 15 years old, 15, 16, and we were making albums. Like People couldn't even think of composing a verse from front to back, and we did it time and time again. We could come up with concepts and rhymes and and deliver it and since, since no one else was doing it we couldn't base if we were good or not on anything Th there were other kids that rapped better than we did but they didn't they didn't have the patience to you know get together and write a full song and then record it and then reproduce it and duplicate it that's what set us apart from the rest was that we could actually put together a complete product but yeah, at the time, we were really happy with this one. We still felt like we had a long way to go. We knew we were just beginning and starting off, and we were happy with our progress. You know, completing three full albums, full length. All three of the albums were 60 minutes, two side cassette tapes, and we, we were just happy. And we knew we'd keep getting better and better, and it was a fun journey up to this point. And the majority of the first three albums, we made the beats on my keyboard all of ourselves. We didn't really sample too much. For instance, this full album here, uh, every single one of these beats we made, and even the last two songs had bass guitar on it. So we were experimenting, and like I said, there was nobody had provided the template on how to do any of this. We had to create, build the, the wheel from scratch. Underground Dwellers, 1990, 666, The Prophecy, F it, I'm gonna die anyway. 1990, 
666, I'm about to burst with the first pick. Living in chaos on this planet, bodies lying standing, blood drops, no cops evaporated by the sun, mad niggas living by the gun in public housing. Every day a head drop, body body. This album could have been a double CD, but I don't think we even knew what a double CD was yet because there were no double CDs in existence. Uh, it was supposed to be like a Halloween horror album. Horrorcore was kind of popular in rap at the time. And, you know, another thing to keep in mind is there was no hand-me-down equipment around. There was no equipment. We had no money. There wasn't like someone's old equipment that you could inherit. Nobody did self-recording. You had to go to a recording studio back in these days. So we had to figure out our own ways to record. There was no computers to record on, no microphones laying around. Like we had to to really figure this out on our own. This was a cool album because it was quasi conceptual. It had the dark feeling to it. It had the Halloween horrorcore feel with Red Skies. I mean, we we swore we had a number one hit record with Red Skies. Looking back on it now, it's like that's a pretty cool song, but it's it's nowhere even near you know worthy. But it was definitely a cool song. It made us feel cool. Just coming the way Kano comes in, 1996, Kano about to burst with the first pick. Such a cool opening track. What a great way to open the album. And I'm proud of this album. I, and, oh, here's the best thing about this album was that we were able to get it onto a CD, which, you know, before we were saying that no one even had a cassette tape. And we definitely had the first CD for underground rappers at least in our area and it was really cool to be able to bring a cd back to our town <clears throat> show it off at school high school so this was definitely cool nobody even knew you could do something like that and we went to in the dark records to do it there's a lot of songs that were really fun to record like uh my nuts are roasting was really fun the day we recorded that uh the prophecy was fun to record that one I always enjoyed Confess to the Obvious. Uh, Rap Styles was cool. Cranial Disaster. Uh, Tormented Souls was the jam. So this was a cool album. It, it's really bad if you didn't, if you weren't a part of it at the time. But you know, looking back on it, I'm proud of this. I'm happy we made it. They can have it. Lyrical Fusion, give it a name, 1996. So as the group's focus shifted in Underground Dwellers, it's pretty much the same people, but we changed our name to Lyrical Fusion. We named the album Give It a Name based on the slogan from Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. And we had our buddy Henry on the album cover. Lyrical Fusion, Straight Pimpin', 1997. This album, we actually finally had a, se a few semi hits. With living it up, lube, and a few other tracks from the album. This album was recorded during my senior year of high school and was released. We had an official release party on this graduation party that we had. At the time, I thought it was thought that it was going to be just our last album because we all went away to college, but somehow. We all kept it going and made the next album the final toast. But I'll say that this album was pretty awesome for the time period. And we were all like living in heaven. We thought we had made the chronic. We thought we made like the greatest album ever at the time. Little did we know we'd top it with the next album. Lyrical Fusion, The Final Toast, 1998. This album was created while I was in college, whereas Straight Pimpin' came out right as I graduated high school. We felt that Straight Pimpin' was a pretty solid lineup of, of tracks, no filler. And the final toast, you know, at the time, this seemed like a classic, a five-mic classic for the source. From front to back, you could just play this album. It was so fresh, so new, so different, 
so cool, so cutting edge. And the internet was pretty impressed with it. People were impressed with it. Like we were considered, finally considered rappers. I remember meeting kids that we knew in high school that, that met up with us again during the final toast era. And they were like, you know, when you guys first started out, we used to laugh at you guys. We thought you guys were a joke, but you guys are pretty solid now. This is, this is good stuff. You guys actually came a long way and you guys are a respectable group. So the final toes touched, I'd say thousands of people and not tens of thousands, but definitely thousands shaped my life, shaped, I think every guy in the group's life, shaped people's lives. People that had this album, there's people that based their part of their life on this album. And what's absolutely insane to me is that come next year, 2018, this album will be 20 years old. I can't believe 20 years have gone by. This is why I'm making this video because I just can't get past this album. It's like Bone Thugs and Harmony just can't get past East 1999 Eternal. And the final toast, and it was to be the final album. And we put a lot into it. We all moved into one house together. Like we all lived in one house, which is what really made the whole time period really surreal. We were, we were living the dream. 1998 and the nightmare all at the same time making songs every day every day was creation every day we were all there partying every day it was 98 was just an absolutely insane year so but 95 to 99 was just insanity but 98 was the pinnacle and that's when the final toast dropped we literally felt like rap superstars and like I felt like rappers were my competition, like I was in business against them. And, and what's funny, there's different types of lyrical fusion fans, underground dweller fans. There's the, the, there's underground dweller 1996-66, the Prophecy fans that that's their favorite album. There's Give It a Name fans, believe it or not, and that's their favorite album. There's straight pimping fans, and they like straight pimping more than Final Toast. And then there's Final Toast fans. And they don't want to hear anything prior to the Final Toast. They're happy with just the Final Toast and that's it. So, yeah, this the Final Toast, we went out with a bang. I gave it my all. I did everything I could. And we, we charted. And I made money. I got checks every month. It was great to get checks in college. That helped really help my life. So... Let's look at these tracks real quick. Getting High on the South Side was monumental. It was like a Bone Thugs and Harmony type song. Sleep, and, and I think that's probably our most famous song ever, Getting High on the South Side. And then Sleep with One Eye Open was kind of like a No Limit record song. Herbs with the Herb was like a Sporty Thieves song. It's a really fun song. Institutionalized is like a Tupac song. Servant Underground is like a Down South track. Lost Empire is hip hop. Death Do Us Part, hip hop. Don't want to deal with it. It's like a West Coast pimping track. Good old days. Tupac. Off the chain. It's like two live crew. Miami. We're from Florida. Verbal prophet. Straight East Coast hip hop. Pain in my eyes. It's like Tupac. Southern interference. Straight hip hop. Dark fortress. is like no limit. 360 degrees of anger. I'd say that that's our style. Like we invented that one. Right on. It was chilling. Kind of like a uh, like a like a commercialized track and fil right on and filthy gems, but by this point we we were able to create the full imagery, the mist the mystique, the interest the intrigue, we put it all together with the final toast. So, yeah, th this was one of my top five achievements in life is the final toast, and it was a group effort. The final toast was probably one of my biggest achievements. And the album even charted in the top 10 on mp3.com behind like Ice-T, Public Enemy, and Mob Deep, and Mariah Carey. It was seen worldwide, nearly, I'd say, five out of the seven continents had, had at least a copy of it. And it was kind of a big deal. We were like the first internet rap group on the net as an entire group, multicultural. And it was all independent. We didn't have anybody helping us. And I think we really did a lot for race relations when, you know, people from all over the United States and elsewhere saw all different uh, races of people just vibing together off the music. It's commonplace now, but at the time it was strange, unfortunately. But it's a fortunate thing that now we're all together. Um, 
But I think we led by example, and we weren't even doing it to be trendy. We just naturally all got together and hung out. So the Final Toast transformed culture. Believe me, it, it transformed a lot of stuff. LF the Melanizants, Life as We Know It 2000. This was another reorganization of the group, a more drastic change than going from underground dwellers to lyrical fusion. But yeah, LF the Melanizants, Life as We Know It, almost like LF the Next Generation. The album Life as We Know It never actually officially released, but it did release in a way as which in present day we'd call like a mixtape. Superfly, Freshly Dipped, 1999. The three core members of Underground Dwellers joined forces with three to four to five, depending on how you saw the rest of the band. And we created a super group called Superfly. It was a rock rap group similar to Linkin Park, similar to Limp Bizkit. And uh, Superfly still exists to this day. They laid, they performed at least over 2,000 concerts. They went on to release an album called Jerk, Blue Collar Whiskey, Collective Consciousness, and a few others. Kendra Morris, who was kind of like a, a satellite act part of Superfly, uh, she's like world famous now, has two albums at least, and has traveled the world it seems. Also, there were two other albums by Underground Dwellers, Unfound Funk 1 and Unfound Funk 2. These were tracks that were cut from the official four releases, so you could imagine how bad those are <laughs> if they didn't even make those bad albums. But there was a charm to the Underground Dweller songs, as well as Lyrical Fusion. And those, to this day, feel like the greatest era of my life, where it was pure creation, where every day after school, whether it was high school or college, or even middle school, dating back to Too Baggy, we were creating some kind of a song, or a video, or something big. I've done a lot of great things since then, but it was all done on an individual, like solo tip, whereas doing all these projects, these were group projects, collaborations, and it was a really good time, and it felt like we were really creating something special, changing the world. Prior to making those official music albums there was many little home recordings of us practicing there were two roughly albums one was called 10 miles roughly and the other was jurassic park it was a parody on my friend and actually he was in them so yeah there was the kitty killers album <laughs> which was like comedy weird songs about killing cats and then there was a comedy album which was a couple of different things. I would say it really wasn't an official planned album. It was a bunch of little comedy skits all combined into one. So not a real official release, but it was included. Aspects of it was included on the legacy disc that I made 15 years ago, which should have provided the closure that I'm still seeking. During the Underground Dwellers era, we had a TV show that we called That Show. And it was that show, that show two, that show four, that show forever. We tried making this cop killer movie. Uh, it was like a like a detective movie. We had some other skits. Jurassic Poop was a short film that we made. But skit after skit after comedy skit, we did a lot of skits. We made a film trilogy called Twinkle Man. Twinkle Man was a superhero. And it was three films. There was a 1997, the original. And the original film, Twinkle Man, was like, think kids, but before kids was made. Think reality TV before it was called reality TV. And all the skits somehow intertwined and interconnected together, kind of like Upright Citizens Brigade. Then the sequel was Twinkle Man 2, which actually kind of had a script, whereas Twinkle Man 1 was more impromptu. And then Twinkle Man 3 was kind of like an unofficial third film, but it... It wasn't quite unofficial, but it was all a bunch of episodes all strung together to make the final of the trilogy. It actually might have been just as good as the original. Books, Postmortem Illness, 1996. I wrote this in one of my summer sessions in high school. Then I had, I remember choosing my life in the afterlife dimension, 2002. Simulation Theory, which is probably my most successful project that I've ever done as a solo individual person. Simulation theory at this point is like my magnum opus, the greatest thing I've that I've done. Uh, although if I ever do complete, well, we're getting to that. 
Tales from 23rd Street was like an anthology of a bunch of different stories by a bunch of my friends that I just combined together. A lot of deleted scenes from things that never got done, scripts that we never made into videos. And then last year, The Diary of Santa Marta, The Complete Illustrated Lyrics. This was with the group Northern Lights Nation, which I'll mention later. And that book is doing pretty good. It may actually go number one this year at some point. Coming Someday, The Online Musings of Jonathan Lippy. That'll be a book. It'll be a comedy book, whereas a lot of my other stuff is like paranormal. The Online Musings of Jonathan Lippy will just be straight comedy, weird, funny stuff I said online. And then my potential next magnum opus will be Voluntary Existence, How to Transform Earth from a Lifetime Prison Sentence to an All-Expenses-Paid Vacation. But I don't know when I'll ever get to making that book. But if I do... It'll be bigger than simulation theory. As far as education, I had mentioned this in a previous video dedicated just to this. I graduated high school in 97, college in 2001, got the IT certifications A+, Network+, INET+, MCP, MCSA, MCSE, ITIL V3, Cloud Essentials, CCENT. I was in gifted in elementary and middle school, honors in high school, and I was in a special program in college called the Learning Community, LC4 at USF. Other projects, Jonathan Lippy, Mind Over Matrix. This was my final music album that I made. It was everything I needed to say. I haven't felt the need to make another song since I made Mind Over Matrix. It's a great, excellent exploration into who I am. It's, the album itself isn't that good as far as execution, but content, if you just look at the lyrics, the lyrics are profound and wonderful. The Unwashed Masses, Misdialed. I helped uh, produce and executive produce this album. It was a series of wrong phone numbers <laughs> that people left voicemails on our system, and I collected them all. Whiteout, We Grinded Mixtape Volume 1. I impersonated Jim Rome for this album. It was a mixtape. That was a fun little project. Still lives on this day somewhere. Triple W Entertainment, Uniting the World's Finest. Did this around 2000, 2001 for a friend of mine who has a company called Triple W Entertainment that stands for World Wide Web. We were kind of like pioneers on the World Wide Web. Latino K collaboration, I must confess. I remember collaborating with him. I remember collaborating with Mercenary Soldiers, POW, a bunch of other groups that I can't remember to this day, all Aura Section. I did a lot of collabos back in the day. I can't remember them all. Ghost Rider, documentary about his Sign of the Times album. Ghost Rider was a rapper in the late 90s early 2000s i did a documentary about his studio and his album mercenary uh, <clears throat> i influenced a lot of people like the mercenary soldiers two-face apollo and hundreds if not thousands of videos that i made and i influenced a lot of people online especially in the late 90s uh, it, both with making music cds books dvds I pioneered a lot of it. I did a lot of things before anybody else did it. Uh, tried new technology before people even knew what to do with it. People are really technologically savvy now in present day, but in the 90s, not many people were computer literate. Not many people knew how to take computers apart, how to use the software, how to capture video, how to burn CDs, what a, even a cable modem was, how to connect to an FTP server. I was doing a lot of this stuff at the very beginnings, and it was very cool to be part of the cutting edge. I had started a record label in part to put out my uncle's past albums. I helped him re-release Refuge Chasing Away the Night onto CD, CUSA Hard Road onto CD, CUSA Cycles, a, a double CD, which a lot of people have CDs, but how many people have double CDs? We, we were able to accomplish that. Uncle Sal, When Worlds Collide in 2007. And then Uncle Sal, sh listen, do you smell something in 2012? Cartoon and Northern Lights Nation. So I, I've realized now that I've spent the better part of the past 15 years collaborating with Cartoon on projects. I appeared on many of Cartoon's albums early on in the early 2000s, and I've advised on nearly the rest of his albums. So Element of Surprise, I was on that. School of Hard Knock, Glory Together on that. Three Steps Ahead on that. Dream Team, Echo 4, I had a major role on that. King of the City, I was on that. The Nation, I was on that. Solid State Volume 1, no, I don't think I was on that, but 
uh, and Dream Team Ladies Night. I helped, uh, actually, I executive produced that to make sure that that got uh, a run, blowing it up. I didn't really have much. I didn't think I had anything to do with that other than inspiration to make sure that that album got pressed onto disc. Ziploc, History Lesson, Solid State of Emergency Volume 2, Smoking Again, Diary of Santa Marta. I'm a... I helped make sure that the remastered edition of that came out and filth. So yeah, I, I, I've it's it's dawned on me right now how much I've worked with cartoon. In a way, I've worked with cartoon more than I worked with all the all the previous people that I mentioned, because that era, the previous era was from '93 to 2001, and the cartoon era is from 2001 to 2017. That's crazy. So yeah, did a lot of projects, and, and this this isn't even all the projects. Watch this. There's even more. We have Big Tune Live at Rumors 2007 DVD and Cartoon Confessions of a Made Man DVD, of which I co-star on the Confessions of a Made Man, and I appear on the Big Tune Live at Rumors in the the special features. YouTube Accomplishments, the Celestine Prophecy Series, the White Book Series, the Simulation Theory, narration series question reality series tupac the seven day theory a few very viral videos that i won't mention that aren't on this channel but uh from the days of napster and morpheus and scour and limewire a bunch of my videos got shared on that the tech Nuba channel the dual legacy channel reality the neurological experience was a big deal at one time i had made videos about mars that had 500,000 views years ago, but there was a period where I deleted all my videos off of YouTube and I've been re-uploading them. So a lot of the, the view count and the, S, the search engine optimization isn't there anymore, but I've made an impact there. And I have over 200 plus videos each on three different channels. So that's like over 600. And I still haven't even uploaded everything that I have. I could probably add another thousand. So I've, let's see what else we got. There's still more slides. So lyrical fusion. I don't know what I'm trying to get out of lyrical fusion. Some kind of closure. I felt like I, th I thought I had it many times when we pressed the final toast, when we got the mp3.com albums. Uh, even Cartoon got the album on Dat Piff. So you can look up lyrical fusion, the final toast, download that for free on Dat Piff. I, I, I still haven't gotten the closure I want. Cartoon's group Northern Lights Nation may be releasing their final album with a title that is in honor of Lyrical Fusion's last official al album, The Final Toast. Their album is called Last to Toast. So maybe that'll bring closure because there may be a reunion track with a collab of Northern Lights with Lyrical Fusion on that. <laughs> we'll see if that actually happens. But I don't know. In the late 90s, I felt world famous. We were in the top 10 on mp3.com, which I mentioned for about a month. I used to get monthly checks from mp3.com and other online sources, banner ads. I used to work with The Tank for No Limit Records. It was a website. 1998 to 1999 was a magical time for me, almost like my pinnacle, even though I've achieved far greater things since the 98, 99 period. But like 96 to 99, Actually, I would even say 95. 95 to, to 2000, it felt like we were directly shaping reality. I mean, you may not have heard of us, but in our minds, we were we were superstars. Um, our songs, which they're not even worth talking about now, are all on youtube.com slash user slash dual legacy. Actually, they're not all there. There's so many. A lot of them are there. And as I find more, I, I keep adding them. Uh, this, and I know I'm leaving tons and tons of projects out, like, just so many different projects are getting left out peripheral things that my friends did that you know i had a little either inspiration advice advising maybe money uh and this video is over 16 minutes long almost 17 right now and i didn't even go in depth on any of this just an overview now granted i'm 38 so you figure if i've worked on one project a year for 20 years it should be a lot of projects but uh but it's been a fun ride. I'm just trying to move on to this next stage in my life. And I just feel like people don't understand how much creation, how many projects, how much, how much I've done, how much I've contributed. And this is all in addition to I've been gainfully employed since 2003, actually since like 2002. You know, I haven't, I, I've, I've lived a pretty full life. And I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful that I've gotten to do all these things. They were all fun. 
I just wish, you know what it is? I Here's what it is. The internet as we know it now didn't exist in the 90s. And I think all these projects, while they were for the time period a, a big deal for me and people that knew me, they never hit that. We didn't have that World Wide Web way to, to distribute our stuff. So, but hey, it's probably a good thing though. I often realize I'm actually happy in ways that the internet wasn't around because we were wild and crazy and we probably would have gotten in a lot of trouble so it's a good thing things all worked out how they were supposed to i just wish that i just wish we had the technology that we have now the money that we have now back then to be able to create when we had all the time in the world all the fire in our souls the hunger but it's a different world now everybody's online everybody could do this now so it's not cutting edge i don't get the same thrill that i did when we were like inventing new ways to do things, everything has been done. Everybody could do it now. So it's not cool anymore. It's not cutting edge. It's not, it's not new and fresh. So I don't know. I still feel like I'm going to, I might do another lyrical fusion tribute video at some point, but for now this will do. So this is just a portion of the things I've done. It's a good portion, but I've done even more. If you did wind up watching this entire video, thanks for watching. And yeah, that's the guy you subscribe to. Guy that's been involved in a whole lot of stuff over the years. So anyway, uh, we'll see what comes next. As of now, this was the last pending thing I had on my list. I have a series of videos that just need to get pushed out there. But this is my liberation video. Scratching it off my list. It's the last thing I needed to do. That was on my mind. Everything else is just bonus from here on out. So my new spiritual journey is about to begin.